details and your chance to win. There you go. It's like your career comes full circle. I just want to thank everyone for coming out. He hoisted it right there, right under the wing of the plane. And we haven't even seen customs yet. Everything comes together in one day when you, when you got the cup and you can take it home to your hometown. This day is awesome. It's what you dream about. A lot of it is uh, giving back to people to help you along the way. In the Canadian province of Saskatchewan, Kings forward Jared Stoll was eagerly awaiting for his day with the Stanley Cup to begin. It's a moment you dream of. It's very, very special, and to see all my friends and family that, that are supporting me in this day, it means a lot. He worked hard. You know, he uh, made a lot of sacrifices throughout his career. He missed a lot of things. When he won the cup, you know, we asked what, what he wanted to do with it. He said, I want a big party, and he said, I want everyone that's ever had anything to do with my life. He's like, I want them there. After receiving the cup at the airport, his day-long party began with a trip to the small town where he was born. Well, right now we're on our way to Newdorf, Saskatchewan. It's uh, the town where I first learned how to skate and uh, I went to school there until I was in grade uh, three. First stop, Grandma's house. She's been getting her garden uh, ready for this day for a long time, so we're going to go visit her and our family there. Hello. Hi. What's up? My grandpa was really important to me. He, uh, he picked out my number 28. You know, he was born in 1928, I was born in 1982, so that's why I wear number 28. And, um, you know, and then he passed away a week later after he picked my number. So it's kind of, uh, means a lot to me and to take the cup to, to their house. You know, I'm sure he's, uh, he's looking down pretty happy on this day. How are you? You look very good. I know, I know. He is here, he's here. He's here. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, guys? He spent, you know, a lot of time with his grandparents, and they were very, very special, special to him. And, and they'd go to a lot of his hockey games, you know, when he played in Edmonton. We'd take them along with us. And they followed him throughout his whole career and supported him a lot, so, uh, so that they meant a lot and still do mean a lot to him. My grandma, she doesn't miss a game. He has a big winner, he gets a, a big goal, and she's the first person to, to call us in the morning. And did you see that game last night? We got off that bus this morning and tears were just rolling down her cheeks and, and you know that she's so proud of him. We're a very close family, so uh, we meant a lot to each other, eh? Oh, yes. Grandpa's smiling somewhere right now, eh? He's looking up at the beautiful blue sky, eh? That was his favorite color. Grandpa thought the world of his grandchildren. He, if you knew him, he was a very loving, compassionate man. And we all miss him. After visiting with his family, it was time for his first public event, giving the small community of Newdorf a glimpse of the cup. Thank you very much for, for coming out today. We've got a beautiful day. Couldn't ask for anything better to see all you, uh, you know, family, friends. There's lots of people here from all the little small towns, and uh, yeah, it's just great to see everybody happy and smiling. Here we go, big smiles. You didn't have to bring it here at all, and you, you, know, you, you know why he did now, because you just look around and you know, you see the fans, you see family, you see friends. It's clear that, um, you know, he, he always knows where his roots are and, and I think he'll have um, a lot of fans for, you know, the rest of his hockey career. Love to see, like, a hometown boy actually bring it home and, like, I've played hockey for years and it's nice to see it back here for once and it's nice to be back in small town and it brings the community together. I wanted to bring it here um, from the second I started playing hockey in that building right there and learning how to skate. It was kind of a community rink, you know, a lot of people had the key and then you just kind of went and if you felt like skating that night, you'd, you'd go open it up and turn the lights on and it takes about 30, 40 minutes for the lights to heat up and get going, but you know, that's just the way it was. That's home and that's, that's where I grew up. You just got to work at it and get better and, and, uh, and want to do it and love the game. He never thought of the Western Hockey League or let alone the NHL, but he worked hard and I think that's what got him where it got him is his work ethic and uh, lots of good hockey players out there. And he had some opportunity and Jared took advantage of those opportunities and, and made the best of them. Wrapping up in Newdorf, he headed to Yorkton. Jared moved there at age eight and even before the Kings won the cup, he knew this would be a destination for Lord Stanley should he have the opportunity to bring it home. 
after game four, his dad said, you know what, you know, he's taking it to Yorkton if they win. Jared just nodded. He said, yeah, we're going to go back to Yorkton. And then being here today to see what he's doing, is just like I said, it's what his parents instilled in him in regards to um, being in the community and giving back to the community. Um, for a small town kid that's never been here in Yorkton before. Meyer, what's up, buddy? Hey. Thank you. And it's all about the community today. He never did anything really, you know, as a family. I think they had it for maybe half an hour just as a family. And the rest of the day, Jared was doing pictures with every kid in town, really. A lot of new Kings fans around here now, eh? <laughs> it's amazing what two months will do. Awesome. It's perfect. I think he believes in being a good person. I think he really does. And he respects everybody. And, the, and people notice that. Yeah, like even his neighbors next door, you know, they're doesn't matter if they're young or old, like they come up to him and congratulate him and they cut out clippings of him in the papers and they just, you know, they just all love him. Everyone talks about, about his character and, and that's one thing that my mom and dad instilled in us at a very young age, you know, you always be true to your roots and, and um, you, you give back to the people who helped you out the most and that's one thing Jared will never forget, you know, he, he remembers who's been good to him and, and um, it's something that he'll cherish for a very long time. He's always giving and caring and especially like making it come to a small town like this. I think it means a lot to him. His roots are strong. It's more for my family than, you know, they've, I wouldn't be in this situation if it wasn't for them, you know, and not only my parents, my brother and my sister, they, they helped me, they pushed me. Uh, we all played hockey, but my parents, they put in so many hours, sacrificed so many things for, for me and for us. And, you know, that's, that's pretty cool because they weren't selfish and they were very unselfish in, in how they lived their life and uh, it means a lot to, for what they did. Coming up, Kings defenseman Willie Mitchell celebrates this top of the world achievement the only way he sees fit. Up there, hoisting this thing, it was spectacular. LA Kings defenseman Willie Mitchell was the next host of hockey's Holy Grail in his hometown of Port McNeil, British Columbia. I'm a hockey fan and I'm a fan of Willie's for obvious reasons. He's from Port McNeil, which is a great little hockey town and proud to be a hockey town. The small hockey town all gathered together as they anticipated the arrival of Willie in the Cup. And he was sure not to disappoint, arriving in front of the crowd by helicopter. My town's really small, it's 2,500 people. And not 2,500 people next to the other 500 people or the other 2,500 people. It's 2,500 people in the middle of nowhere. I think when you're this remote, you all become a family. The warm atmosphere in Port McNeil that day made sure this was a day he'd always remember. And a happy Willie Mitchell Day to everybody. Walking in and every face you're seeing is a face you recognize and yeah, it was pretty emotional. It's a real special day for me, my family. Um, you know, as a kid, sitting over in the corner there tying my skates and eating salmon sandwiches, because that's what we do here, right? <laughs> when we built the arena, I decided I'd learn how to skate. And Willie and his dad would be present in the arena at noon every day. He'd have his salmon sandwich, and I'd be doing up the skates, and then we'd go out on the ice. And of course, there's adults out there, older kids, right? So I used to spend about 15 minutes with him, making him do drills, and he would do them, right? Because he knew after 15 minutes, if he did all the drills, he could go play with the big boy. That was kind of our routine over there. So we finished up the Port McNeil event. We headed over on uh, the chopper over to Alert Bay. Great anticipation awaited the Stanley Cup and Willie's arrival on Alert Bay, home of some of his friends and biggest fans, Namgi First Nation. They're huge supporters of mine. Everybody followed uh, Willie right from when he started into the NHL, and uh, of course we were, uh, we were quite proud that somebody from our community, uh, we consider Port McDale our community, uh, uh, was in the NHL. And it's uh, quite an achievement. He's a role model for a lot of our young people. I connect with them really well. Their band, uh, something that's very important to them is connecting with nature and the environment, and that's, that's who I am. I don't even 
know what to say. Look at this. This is uh, unreal. Uh, look at the light shining on the cup here. The fire. Oh, the big house is rocking. Uh. It was a pretty unique experience there, and I didn't expect all the things that they offered me and my family. We decided that it's only proper to give Willie a name in our language, and we will do that uh, now. And uh, the name is Khalyatum. Basic translation is uh, amazing. Willie was hurt for a while, and then he came back and uh, contributed quite a bit to the Kings uh, winning the Stanley Cup. So in that way, he's quite amazing. Also amazing are some of the unique photo opportunities BC has to offer. Up there, hoisting this thing because it's a top of the world achievement. It was spectacular. You kind of go through everything what you kind of experienced um, to get to this point, and it was, uh, it was an awesome moment had reflection and the reality at certain moments during the day. I'm going to have a lot of those moments for the rest of my life, and it's kind of just all surreal. Coming up, Kings forward Dustin Penner takes the cup along as he enjoys his favorite hobby. It's going to be the longest 18 holes of my life. <laughs> Having won the Stanley Cup in 2007 with the Anaheim Ducks, Kings forward Dustin Penner was looking forward to his second time hosting the Cup in his hometown. I woke up this morning and went to Yorkton to pick it up with my neighbor who has a plane. You got it here, that's amazing. We flew back here to Winkler with a quick stop over at my home to visit my grandma and have some breakfast. I'm making homemade crepes. Don't say pancakes. And we didn't have pancakes, we had crepes. We're going light now. This is great. The last time I took the cup here, five years ago, was my grandpa who was on the way out and passed away shortly after. So, you know, she's made it five more years without him, and it was great to be able to share it with her. So say a few words of wisdom, Mom, to your son, grandson. He's still the same boy, like I think like any boy who comes home to their parents. They want some of their favorites and some of their little treats that they have, and that's what you try to do as a mom. This is probably the best part of coming home is getting that home-cooked food. Later. It's very exciting. We're very happy for him. We couldn't be prouder for him. Second time around is even better than the first time around. It's been nothing but great. Uh, who would have thought, eh? I mean, two cups. Uh, years ago, you wouldn't even have thought a game in the National Hockey League, and here we are again, so it's unbelievable. This time I want to spend more personal time with him, more family time, and do things that I would have done if no one knew what the Stanley Cup was about only me. And for Dustin, some of the most personal time he could spend with the Cup is at his local golf course. How you doing, bud? Good. You're getting bigger, huh? Oh, yeah, and we'll do like that, so. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right, good luck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. You gotta be kidding me. It was stuck. I don't It was not this. stuck. It you just step too. on the gas. This is, gonna be a, this is gonna be the longest 18 holes of my life. <laughs> Does this thing go on the field? I saw where your first shot went. Yeah, no, it's breakfast ball. <laughs> Get out, spit it. Uh, sit. So far, so good. To be able to come out here with the cap and play a course that I played the most of my entire life, it's, it's pretty special to do it with guys that I've golfed with. He doesn't get to come home very much, uh, professional hockey player, but uh, when he does come home, he usually brings a cup with him, so it's, uh, it's a special day. Let's go at him up. Taking it golfing, you know, was really calm and relaxing. It was something not a lot of guys probably do. There's not enough time, and yeah. I was lucky enough to have a second chance at it and do a couple things I wasn't able to do the first time. After a peaceful morning on the golf course, Dustin headed over to the town mall where he had plans to show the cup off to the Winkler community. You give back to the community that helped raise you, that, you know, your parents grew up in, that, you know, where you have a lot of friends and family. And same with my parents, they have a lot of ties to this area, and it's something I wanted to do. Perfect. Good. You're doing well? You want to satisfy so many people because, you know, I work in a hospital. I'm asked every day, please, can you get me to see him? And that, and so you're trying to make everyone happy. That's our goal, and sometimes that's hard to do, but try our best. 
After time with the public, Dustin aimed for a quiet, intimate evening with his prize. Today we're just having a dinner here, friends, family, you know, around 200 people. You know, where they can, people that I've spent a lot of time with over the years. I gotta give this guy a hug. I haven't seen him in so long. I appreciate everybody coming out. It means a lot to me. Dustin Hannon, Dustin Hannon. I had a lot of, a lot of support growing up, starting at the top with my mom and my dad. It's uh, unbelievable. Like, yeah, if I do think back, uh, making the um, mini road trips, with, you know, which we call it, uh, to all over the small towns, and and now we're here in the, in the big show, so to speak, with two Stanley Cups. It's uh, it's mind-boggling to a large degree. So uh, it's been nothing but a, a very good ride so far. For any mom or dad, if your child is successful in what he wants to do and is happy about and is passionate about, we couldn't be happy for him that he achieved his goal and his dream. Coming up, Kings forward Justin Williams puts the cup and his body on the line against his friends. Should have brought the con snipe there, Justin. You're looking pretty good. The cup summer voyage continued stateside. Justin Williams excitedly awaited his day. We're hockey players. We, we strived our whole career to get to this moment. And uh, when we finally get our cup day, we're excited. And I woke up with a smile on my face. Woke up an hour before my alarm. Day starts. Where is that, Jax? Cool, huh? This is where I enjoy my summer, Ventnor. So it just makes it right to uh, bring it back here. Should we bring it in? Huh? I'll help you, Daddy. You'll help me? Okay. I'll hold that side, okay? Hosting the cup for a second time in his career, Justin made sure the focus was on his family this time. When you win it sometimes, I think you throw a party for everyone else. I think the second time when I won it, I wanted to take a little bit more me time, uh, more time for the family to enjoy it. Oh, yummy. <laughs> After breakfast on land, they headed out to sea for some photos. Daddy, I'm on my turn. Mommy, I want to be the driver. Are you here to be the driver? We'll see. Let's go. All right, let's go. Let's get this thing moving. Is that an eight horse? Oh, yeah, this thing's humming. <laughs> Last time I won it, I didn't have any kids, so um, getting some extra pictures with them was super special. You got me next to Kelly and Jack's on? I know my son was kind of standoffish earlier on in the day. Come on, Jax. Let me see that smile, Jax. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. that's okay. He warmed up a little bit, and I was able to get some shots with him. Yay, Jax. Right, Jax, put your hands up. Ooh, yay, there you go. Yeah. It's special to celebrate it with the people who love you most. And, uh, there's no one that loves you more than your kids and your wife. Mommy, I'm going to drive now. Jax, how old are you? Oh, four. So four is old enough to drive a boat? Oh, it is. Okay. Wow, Jax, you're doing a good job. Once Justin's son, Jackson, got them back to shore safely, Justin's brother-in-law joined them for an extra memorable boat ride, one that nobody wanted to miss. His brother-in-law wanted to take advantage of the unique opportunity of having the cup around and use it as a backdrop as he proposed to his girlfriend. Didn't exactly know how he was going to do it, but he knew he wanted to have the uh, the Stanley Cup uh, around when he did it. Definitely surprised. I thought maybe when we were alone at some point throughout the weekend, but definitely not on the boat with the cup there and in front of everyone. Couples who stay together a long time usually have a good story to tell of how they were engaged, so they certainly have a good one. Once they finished up at the house, Justin took the cup to a neighborhood park, much to the surprise of the locals. Oh, my God! Oh, my God, the Stanley Cup! <laughs> when you're able to bring some joy to other people, um, just by simply bringing it around, it certainly makes you feel good, and, you know, I hope to do it a few more times. All right! All right! Always making time for a few photos, his main focus was a classic street hockey game. First time I won, we had a road hockey game, myself and my close friends uh, back in Coburg. Um, this year, I kind of wanted to do it again. As I was talking with Mike Bolt uh, before, the cupkeeper, he, uh, he said he only hangs around with winners, which is obviously very true, so. Feels, uh, you lose, you walk home early. <laughs> 
He doesn't want to be out to take the cup for me after this game, so I'm really going to have to win one more. <laughs> He'll be the first guy to take the cup away at 1 o'clock in the afternoon because he can't play hockey. It's over. It's over. <laughs> While Justin faced the pressure of defending the cup, his friends were faced with different pressure, building a net. Anybody else want to play in the No, 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 no. That doesn't look good. It's very embarrassing. As far as it looks like a net, guys. As Justin's day with the cup winded down, he took the short drive over to Atlantic City to show appreciation to all who have supported him over the years. When you win it, you have thousands of people cheering for you, your family, your friends. Everyone is kind of pulling for you. And in turn, that makes it extra special. When you win it, uh, you're able to celebrate it with the people who enjoy you and the people who uh, have cheered for you the most. He appreciates family and friends. He appreciates where he comes from. As you get older, your priorities change, and family and friends become a lot more important to you. So when he won it this time, he made the decision that was very close family and friends, and this is where he wanted to celebrate it. Very proud of him. It's not lost on guys and how hard it is and what it's all about. You hear guys all the time, and you go, holy cow, I'm with the Stanley Cup. You know, here I am with the greatest trophy that I've been dreaming about since I was a kid, and I'm now about to have my name on it for a second time. We're especially happy to, to have it at our home. Enjoy it with the people who care about you most. And um, it's actually a, a really nice place to enjoy the summer. And we were able to get some great pictures and some uh, and great memories. The power and the smiles that that trophy puts on, there's, there's nothing like it. I don't think there's another atom and object on the planet that has that kind of power. It's not just the King's Trophy, it's the trophy for all of hockey. It's the people's trophy. The Stanley